Magandang umaga po mga kapatid sa Good Neighbor Christian Fellowship at sa lahat po ng ating mga kaibigan at mga kapatiran sa iba't ibang bahagi ng daigdig. Salamat po sa inyong pagsama minsan pa sa ating gawain ngayong umaga. Salamat po sa inyong patuloy na pagsubaybay. Salamat po sa inyong mga panalangin. Salamat po sa inyong pagsuporta sa gawain ng Panginoon. The Lord is good. Ngayon po ay first Sunday ng May at uh, meron po tayong panibagong theme for this month na ipinagkaloob po sa atin ng ating Chairman Pastor Armando Santos. It's a series of lessons on the call to discipleship. Yan po ay napakahalagang uh, aralin sa banal na kasulatan. Sapagkat dyan po tayo tinawag na lahat ng Panginoon. We are all called to be disciples of Jesus Christ. So for this month, we shall uh, dig into this subject, call to discipleship. So why don't you bow your head and join me in a word of prayer as we begin with our study. Father, we thank you today. Oh, that you are always with us, giving us guidance and blessings and protection, giving us, oh Lord, wisdom and knowledge and understanding giving us, providing for us everything we need. And so we thank you, Father. You are a faithful God, a loving God, a compassionate God. And we thank you that you have never left us because you promised that I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you to the end of the age. And so help us today as we study your words in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So if you have your Bibles with you today, I'd like first to invite you to open with me to the book of uh, Matthew chapter 4. I will be using the Amplified Version today. The Amplified Version of the Bible. Matthew chapter 4, beginning with verse 18. As Jesus, as He was walking by the Sea of Galilee, He noticed two brothers Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, throwing a dragnet into the sea, for they were fishermen. So we see, brothers and sisters, that Jesus is meeting people from all walks of life in their place of residence, in their place of work. God is not calling us to go to some cathedral to meet Him there. No, Jesus goes out to where we are, where we live, where we work. And so these two guys, Simon and Andrew, were fishermen. Verse 19, And Jesus said to them, Come after me. It's a call. Come after me. Follow me. It says in the Amplified, come after me as disciples, letting me be your guide. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. The call of Jesus is very clear. There's nothing vague about it. There's nothing unclear about it. Jesus is giving you what it is. What you see is what you get. There's no deception. There's no flattery. There's no hidden agenda. There's no uh, unreal promises. Just, Just the reality of what He is calling us to do. He said, Come after me. Follow me. You follow me as disciples. Let me guide your life. Let me be your guide. I like that. I like that, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus is calling us to himself. And he promised that he will guide us. He will be there for us. Follow after me and I will make you fishers of men. I'll give you a new job. I'll give you a new vision, a new calling, a new reason for living. And let me tell you, that is the most important thing that we and I must discover because those are the things that matters. That, because in this world, everything will disappear. Oh, there's a song that goes like this. Only one life, it will soon be passed. Only what's done for Jesus will last. Heaven and earth will pass away. 
Everything you see will pass away. All the beautiful buildings will grow old and decay and be demolished and they'll be gone. Now you see them and then you don't. The people you see around you, now you see them and then you don't. Because people die. We are like grass that, 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 that springs up and then we dry up and then we disappear. That's the way it is with life. Oh, but when you follow God, He's going to give you a new reason for living, a new passion, a new direction that is the best. Let me tell you, no one else and nothing else can offer you anything better than God is offering us. And He said, I will make you fishers of men. You are already fishermen, Peter and John. Peter and Andrew, you are fishermen. You, you, you go out there, you work for fish. Oh, but let me tell you something. I'll give you something better. You will fish, not for fish. In the Sea of Galilee, you will fish for the souls of men all over the world. You will have the opportunity to touch the world. You will have the opportunity to change the world. You will have the opportunity to bring men, women, and children to glory and glory forever. In heaven, what do you think? What do you think is better than that? Oh, there's nothing better than that. We're talking eternal here. We're talking forever and ever and ever. When you catch your fish and you sell them, after a few hours, that fish is gone in their stomach and they're hungry again. Oh, but this gospel of the kingdom, this bed of life, this light of the world will be here forever and ever. Will take people to glory forever and ever and ever. And so follow me. I'll guide you. I will make you fishers of men. How did they respond? Oh, verse 20. At once, immediately, at once. Verse 20. At once they left their nets and became his disciples. Oh, let us not allow the call of God to pass by without us listening to it and obeying it, forsaking all things, setting aside all things, and give our lives, our lives, our future, everything we've got to Jesus Christ. You will never be a loser when you follow Jesus Christ. You'll gain more than you can ever imagine. Oh, it doesn't mean that we will not work. It doesn't mean that we will not do business. It doesn't mean that we will not save up and build houses and, 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 and provide for our family. That's not what it means. This is a change of life, change of direction, change of destiny. And wherever God sends you, wherever God entrusts to you, He will be there to bless you beyond your wildest imagination. I am a pastor. I am a proud and happy, blessed pastor. I've been a pastor for more than 30 years. But I'm also an educator. I am a school administrator. I'm working. I'm working. The church doesn't totally, totally support me and the needs of my family. Because that's, that was my prayer. God, I, I'll serve you. But I will not allow the church to suffer, to support the needs of my family. I'd like to work. I'd like to work so that I can send my children to school, so I can provide for my family. And the Lord is good. He has given me a wife who's working along with me. She's a doctor in a hospital here in the Philippines. And together we work. Together we devote ourselves to God. Together we raise a family. Together we provide for the future of our children. And the Lord is so good and so faithful. So when you are called to be a disciple, it doesn't mean that you go live in a tent in the middle of a mountain. Not to be, he did not call to be a monk. In some monastery. No. It means that God is calling us to a new life of devotion and service to Him. That wherever you are, you use that opportunity to change lives. To touch lives. To win souls for Jesus Christ. And so, when they heard the call, verse 20, At once they left their nets and became His disciples. They sided with His party and followed Him. That's what I did more than 30 years ago. And I'm so thankful. I have no regrets. 
because God has blessed me more than I can ever imagine. Now, I'd like to turn your attention to the mark of being a disciple. Here, the first mark of, of discipleship, of, of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. How do you know that you are a true disciple of Jesus Christ? I'd like to invite you to turn with me to the book of John, uh, chapter 8. The book of John, chapter 8. This is what we will see. Again, I'll be reading from the Amplified Version. Now, we are called by Jesus Christ to be His disciples. And many of us say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, I will follow you. And so what is the mark that indeed you have become a disciple of Jesus Christ? It's not an emotional thing. It's not joining a religion. It's not joining a membership. No, it's, it's, it's giving your life, surrendering your life to the master. And how do we know? if we have become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Here in verse 31, John chapter 8, verse 31. So Jesus, from Amplified, so Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, hold fast to my teachings and live accordance with them, you are truly my disciples. So who has become the disciples of Jesus Christ? Those who Listen to the call. Those who responded to the call. Those who abide in my words. If you have truly believed in Jesus Christ, you say, I have accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I am now a disciple. How do we know if you are truly have become a disciple? If you have pledged to abide by my words. If you pledge to follow the word of God, to be faithful, to obey the word of God. That is a mark. That is a sign. That's a proof that you have indeed become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Abide in my word. Hold fast to my teaching. Live in accordance with them. So abide in my words. Hold fast to my teachings. Live in accordance with them. Obey them. Be faithful in obeying them. Then you are truly my disciple. So that's a call, ladies and gentlemen. It's not just words we say here. It's the way we live. It's the way we obey. It's the way we faithfully serve our master. And verse 32, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Jesus is saying that if you know me, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you know me personally, if you experience me personally, then he, I will set you free. My words will fill your heart and your mind. I will set you free from all the uh, penalties of sin, all the powers of sin, all the influence of sins, all the works of the enemy, all the influences of the world. All of these things, I will set you free from deception, from, from superstition, from anything that is self-centered and self-sufficient. This is what I would like you to experience, the true freedom you receive when you accept me. You shall know the truth, and I am the truth. You shall know the truth, my word is the truth, and this will set you free. When the Son of Man has set you free, you are free indeed. The Apostle, Apostle John says. So we are free. Thank God we are free. We don't have to be enslaved by sins or enslaved by false understanding of superstition and religion. We can be free. And the Word of God will set us free to follow Jesus. Not so that you will be free from one religion and follow another religion. This, this has nothing to do with religion at all because religion will not save any one of us. Jesus said it very clear. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. Everybody will go to heaven in the same way. They will pass through the same door, Jesus Christ. They will pass through the same way, Jesus Christ. They will have to live the same truth, Jesus Christ. No one goes to the Father except.
except through me, Jesus said. And we become truly a disciple of Jesus Christ. And that is what we will celebrate today in the Lord's Supper. We will celebrate the Lord's Supper today in remembrance of everything He has done to save us, to redeem us, and make us belong to Himself now and forever and ever. So let's give God our thanks and our love. Father, we thank you for all that you've done on the cross for us. We thank you, Lord God, for the redemption of our souls. We thank you that you have called us to become your disciples. And we thank you, Lord God, that we have learned to surrender everything to you. Oh, this is a wonderful life. This is a wonderful journey. This is a wonderful mission we have right now, calling people to you just, just as you have called us to be your disciples. And God, we celebrate the fact that you are using our lives to touch the world, to change the world and make it a better place through Jesus Christ. In the midst of this pandemic, we need hope. In the midst of this pandemic, we need light. And that hope and that light is Jesus Christ. And so bless us as we celebrate your sacrifice, as we remember your sacrifice on the cross for us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have uh, your bread with you and a cup of grape juice with you, you pause for a moment and join me in the reading of the Word of God. From 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning with verse 23, this is what we will read from the King James Version. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, same thing. This is nothing new. This is not an invention of man. This is not some new thing that man has instituted. It's the same words that Jesus gave to his disciples and for centuries on passed down to all our fellow believers because it's written in the word of God and now we receive and we declare the same message. I have received from the Lord, which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it. And he said, this is my body. Take it and eat. This is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus is saying, I let this happen because you're so important to me. I let this happen. My body broke it. And remember me. Whenever you hold this bread, whenever you take this bread, you remember what I've done for you. Remember my love. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Oh, Father, we do just that today. We pause and remember everything that Jesus said, everything that Jesus did, everything that Jesus has given everything that Jesus has sacrificed so that he can redeem us and give us life eternal. Oh, bless us all as we believe in Jesus as his disciples, as we serve him, as we give everything we've got for his honor and his glory. Bless this bread and bless us as we take it in Jesus' name. Amen. After the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, he said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This cup, this is a New Testament in my blood, sealed by my blood. So you do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Oh, Jesus is glorified. Jesus is pleased. Jesus is exalted when we take the cup to remember him. Because this cup is the remembrance of his blood shed on the cross for us. So as often as you eat the bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death until he comes. He died for us and he rose again. He's in heaven preparing for us a kingdom and he will come back and he will come back again. Isn't that wonderful? Our master will come back again take us to himself. And for now, as his disciples, we serve him, 
we share His Holy Word and we lead people to Him. That gives Him honor and glory and praise. Let us pray. Bless this cup as we remember you. Bless this cup as we remember the blood that shed, that was shed for us to cleanse us and wash us clean. Oh, when you look at us, you don't see our shortcomings. You don't see our imperfection. You don't see our sins. You see your blood. And so we remember that today and every day of our lives. You bless us as we take this cup in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It is our privilege to worship the Lord with you. It is our privilege to serve the Lord with you. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for watching um, this online services and sharing this with your friends. We will see you again next time. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. God bless you all.